Hi, so this is one of the most popular videos on my channel and it talks about how to convert audio to MIDI, specifically an instrument or voice playing, singing a monophonic melody that you want to convert to a MIDI track to have it played by, I don't know, maybe a synth or something else. On this video, I got this question a couple of weeks ago. Is there a way to do this for drums? And I did actually show that in a sponsored video about Hertz drums. But I think the whole subject definitely deserves a video of its own. So let's have a look at how to convert audio to MIDI for drums. Let's go. Now as an example for this recording, I'm going to use a multi-track recording that we did with my band The Wash a couple of years ago. The track is called No Silence and it has been released already. I didn't mix it, but our bass player Peter from Perfect Sounds Unleashed has mixed this track. And I actually visited his studio a couple of weeks ago and I made a video about that as well. I'll leave a link to that video in the description so you can still check it out if you haven't seen it yet. So let's have a listen to this drum recording which already has some basic processing on it. Yeah, so quite a basic drum beat, not mixed yet. And let's take the kick track as an example for what I want to generate MIDI from. But obviously you can use the same technique for any of these drum tracks. So let's first have a listen to the track that we're going to generate MIDI from. And as you can see over here, we actually recorded three kick tracks. A kick in, a kick out, and a kick sub. So in order to generate accurate MIDI from a drum track, it's best if the particular drum is as audible and as separated from the other drum hits as possible. So let's have a listen at which track is best for that. This is the kick in mic. This is the kick out mic. And this is the kick sub. Well, it's pretty obvious in this case, the kick in has the clearest kick hit and the least amount of bleed from the other drums, which also makes sense, of course, because the microphone is inside the kick drum. And if we have a look at the track in a bit more detail, you can hear that the kick hits are clearly audible and also very visible in the waveform, which always helps. So let's open this audio track in the sample editor by double clicking. And then we need to go to hit points. And the hit points section basically shows you all the musically relevant positions in audio files. And Cubase can detect these positions and create hit points automatically by analyzing the onsets and the melodic changes of the audio. And you can see that it has already detected a lot of hit points, which are the virtual lines with a little triangle on top here. And if the hit points haven't been calculated automatically for you, you can enable that in preferences, edit preferences, editing audio, enable automatic hit point detection. But if we listen to this audio, you can see that there are more hit points than kick drum hits. So we basically need to filter and maybe even edit those hit points. So let's enable edit hit points. And you now have the threshold and the intensity slider to filter out some of those hit points. For example, with this threshold, you can see that if I turn it up really high, none of the hit points are selected at the moment. We don't see any of those vertical lines. They're still there here on top, those little triangles, but none of them have been selected because all of the audio is below the threshold that I've set here. So let's reduce the threshold again. And this probably looks about right for selecting the kick drum hit points. Let's have a listen. Yeah, this looks absolutely great. Now, another way to filter the hit points would also be the intensity slider. If you slide that at the bottom, you can see those yellow intensity indicators. And probably this is the intensity of the kick drum. Although over here you can see that we also have this hit here selected, which is probably a snare. Let's listen. Yeah, so the intensity slider doesn't really help us here. So let's use the threshold for the waveform. This looks about right. Now what's important now is that you make sure that you have a hit point on every kick hit and that there's no hit point on any other drum. So let's zoom out a bit and see whether there's any busy stuff here, which may be false triggers. Let's have a listen here, for example. Yeah, that's still right. But if some of this had been wrong, for example, if this one over here was not a kick hit, then you can also disable a hit point by pushing shift and clicking on the line that represents the hit point. And now there's no longer a hit point over here. Let's revert that because that was actually a kick drum. 
At the same time, it could also be that a kick hit is missed. For example, imagine that this one was a kick hit. Then you can also click on little triangle here that locks the hit points because a locked hit point will always stay selected independent of how you set these filters over here. But again, this was no kick hit, so let's undo that as well. Oh, and by the way, if a kick hit is not exactly right, then you can also move it in this way just by picking up the hit point line and moving it to somewhere else. But again, let's revert that because it was exactly in the right place. So let's assume all the hit points are correct now. And by now, if you like this video or find it useful at all, please give it a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm so that it gets shown to more people. Subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon if you want to get notified when I publish another video. If you're really enjoying my content, you can also use the super thanks button below to show your appreciation, which is kind of a virtual tip jar. Or if you intend to buy anything at one of these stores, I have many affiliate links in the description. And if you click one of those and then buy something at that store, I'll get a small commission without any additional cost to you, which is very, very much appreciated. But let's get back to the video because that means we can now create MIDI notes from them. And that's over here in the create section, create MIDI notes. Now there's basically two options here for the velocity mode, meaning the velocity value for the generated MIDI note. You can say dynamic velocity and then Cubase will look at the loudness of the kick hit and generate the corresponding velocity for the MIDI note. Or you can set it to fixed velocity and in that case you can actually select a velocity value and then all MIDI notes will have the same velocity. But let's choose dynamic here because I want to use all the dynamic variations that our drummer used here. Now you can choose the pitch of the MIDI note and a kick is usually on C1 of any MIDI pad but if you're using a particular drum VSTI then you can also check in that virtual instrument which MIDI note is assigned to your kick drum. You can choose the length of the MIDI note and you can choose where you want the MIDI notes generated either on a track that you already selected maybe you already created a MIDI track or, or you have the track of your virtual drum instrument selected which I haven't or you can even put them on the project clipboard. Let's just generate a new MIDI track over here and press OK. Now if we now scroll down you can see that Cubase has created a MIDI track here MIDI 01 and a MIDI part on this track called kick in MIDI so that's actually the channel that the MIDI was generated from. So let's have a look at this in the MIDI editor by double clicking and if we zoom in you can see that there's a C1 node generated on every location of the kick hit. You can also see that the velocities here of all the kick hits in the end the drummer apparently played really loud kick hits. At the start they were less loud. Now if you want to you can change that. For example if this velocity does not sound quite right on your drum VSTI you can just select all of them and then pull them up to whatever level you want. So the dynamic variations are still there. Relatively they're just a little bit higher so they will trigger louder kick hits on your drum VSDI. And talking about that, in our case, let's use the new drum machine in Cubase 14 to actually play those MIDI notes for us. So let's add another track here, drum machine. And as you can see, the new drum machine opens up in the lower zone of Cubase. And since we generated MIDI note C1, you can see that the path for C1 is over here. But if I click it, I get no sound because there's basically no sounds assigned yet. And we could use one of the drum synth sounds. And let's turn it down a bit because these generated drums are usually loud. Yeah, so that's a very electronic sound for a kick. Since we have an acoustic drum set over here, let's just try to find a sample. Let's go to find samples. Okay, so over here you can select what kind of samples you want to find. But in our case, we indeed are looking for a kick drum and a one shot. Now I know that this is a nice acoustic sample. It sounds like this. If we wanted to, we could also add a second sample to have a sort of layered kick drum. But in our case, let's stick with this one. So let's actually move our MIDI part onto the drum machine here. If we click control at the same time, we make sure that the MIDI part is not moved horizontally. So let's see how the combination of our acoustic drum and the MIDI part sounds. And this is without. Well, it definitely makes the kit a lot more forceful. So let's balance it a bit more. Now, one thing that you typically want to do if you're using both the original as well as a sampled drum 
is that you want to make sure that they are in phase. You can leave this track as a drum machine track. You don't have to generate audio from it if you don't want to, but you can just try if the inverted phase for the drum machine sounds better or not. And for that, you can go to the channel settings. If you select equalizer, there's a phase button over here that you can use to invert the phase. And let's maybe only select the kick hits here. So I want this one and the kick in. Yeah, the inverted phase sounds a bit fuller, I think, with some more low end. So that's probably the right setting in this case. And that, my friends, is how you convert audio to MIDI for drums. Now, if you want to see my original video on how to convert audio to MIDI for melodic instruments, I will link it over here. Check it out, enjoy, and see you soon.